All right, I am so excited to share this next pro tip with you. This is a five-star, truly expert-level analytics tip. We're going to talk about optimizing complex models using Solver. Now, what Solver is designed to do is work with real-world complex optimization problems that require multiple inputs or decision variables subject to a given set of constraints. Now, consider a case like this. Here we're looking at a transportation matrix that tells us the cost to ship goods between four different factories, Boston, New York, Chicago, and Oakland, and four different distribution centers, Miami, Dallas, Seattle, and Baltimore. And we're gonna be walking through this in depth when we jump into Excel, but the bottom line, the objective here, is to figure out how many units of product to ship from each factory to each distribution center in order to minimize our total shipping cost. Now, it's not quite that simple because in the real world, we have constraints and limitations as well. For one, we need to fulfill all of the orders demanded, in this case, 6,000 total orders. And two, we can't exceed the inventory available at each specific factory. So for a problem like this, we really can't use simpler tools like GoalSeek, which required a single input or decision variable and a single concrete outcome. In this case, we need to use Solver because Solver allows us to either minimize, maximize, or target an objective value. It allows us to change multiple input cells or decision variables, and it allows us to determine specific constraints as well. So what we're going to do here is head to our data tab and click on the Solver button to launch the Solver parameters box. Now, if you don't see Solver in your data tab, keep in mind that most versions of Excel have Solver as a built-in plugin, but by default, it's typically not enabled. So you may need to head to File, Options, Add-ins, and then drill into your Excel add-ins to plug that in. Now, looking at this dialog box here, there are three parameters that we'll need to determine. Number one is our objective. In this case, our objective lives in cell E23. It's our shipping cost. And our goal is not to set that shipping cost to any specific value. It's to minimize. Number two, we determine exactly which variable cells or input variables to change in order to meet our objective. So here, our decision variables live in cells D16 through G19. And last but not least, we need to optimize subject to a specific set of constraints. So in this case, we can't ship fractions of units. So our units need to be whole numbers or integers. We can't exceed the inventory available at each factory. And we need each distribution center to fulfill its entire demand. Now, one very quick note about solving methods, which you'll see right beneath that constraint window. There are three different options you can choose here. I'm not going to go into the details. It's well outside the scope of this course. But rule of thumb, you're going to use simplex LP for any simple linear optimizations like the problem we're dealing with here, and GRG or evolutionary for more complex nonlinear optimizations. The big difference between those two is that GRG is much faster but may not provide the global optimal solution. Evolutionary is more likely to provide that global solution but takes a lot longer to calculate. So now that we've set our objective, our decision variables, and our constraints, we can go ahead and click Solve and check it out. Excel will produce or populate all of the values in those decision variables to minimize our bottom line shipping cost. So here we see that we're shipping 225 units from Boston to Miami. We're shipping 975 from New York City to Dallas, 500 from Oakland to Seattle. And at the end of the day, we're meeting the demand, we're shipping all 6,000 units, we're not exceeding our inventory at each factory, and our total shipping cost comes in at just under $97,000. So as you can see, incredibly powerful tool. Common use cases, just like we see here, determining optimal results subject to real-world constraints. Things like limited inventory, like price floors, like integer values, etc. So with that, let's jump into our pro tip workbook and solve this optimization problem step by step. All right, so if you're following along, head to your table of contents, scroll all the way over to your analytics tips, and we're gonna link out to our solver demo here. And here you'll see that transportation matrix that we talked about in the slide. But before I dive in, 
pop into your data tab and look for that solver button. It's usually all the way on the right. If you don't see it, head to File, Options, Add-ins, and then from this drop down, you're going to want to manage your Excel add-ins and press Go. And you should see Solver add-in in this window here. Just pop a check mark in that box, press OK, and you should see that pop up in your data tab. Now, returning to our problem here, what we have are transportation costs, the actual cost to ship a single unit from our factories to our distribution centers. And this is based on actual mileage, right? So shipping from Boston to Baltimore is quite cheap, only about $4 per unit, but shipping from Boston to Seattle is much, much more expensive, over $30 per unit. Now, we're also dealing with two different constraints here. We have supply constraints, which is the limit to the number of units that each factory can supply. So Boston currently only has 1,000 units in stock. New York City has 2,000. Chicago has 2,500. Oakland only has 500. So we can't ship more units than a given factory has in inventory. So that's constraint number one, or supply constraint. We also have demand constraints, which are listed right here in row 10, which says that, OK, Miami only needs to fulfill 1,250 orders. So it doesn't make sense to ship more units to Miami. And in fact, we can't ship fewer units to Miami because we need to fulfill these orders. We need to get these products into the hands of the customers who ordered them. So we've got to get 975 to Dallas. We've got to get 3,250 to customers in the Seattle area and so on and so forth. So those are our demand constraints. And bottom line is that there are 6,000 units that we're looking to ship here as part of this model. Now, if we jump down beneath the transportation matrix, we have our objective or our outcomes. So the goal here, again, is to populate these values right here in D16 through G19. Those are the input or decision variables that will be changed in order to evaluate or calculate the total shipping cost. So watch what happens if we just plug some numbers in. Let's say we ship 100 units from Boston to Miami, uh, 50 from New York to Dallas, uh, 350 from Chicago to Seattle, and 25 from Oakland to Baltimore. As you can see, we're calculating the number of units shipped per factory. We're going to make sure that those numbers don't exceed these constraints in I5 through I8. We're also calculating the number of units received by each distribution center. And we'll want to make sure that these numbers don't exceed or come in under the ones here in D10 through G10. These have to be exactly equal at the end of the day because we've got to fulfill those orders. And then last but not least, our total shipping cost sell, this is our bottom line objective that we care about, is a simple sum product function that basically takes all the units sold or shipped from each factory to distribution center, multiplies them by their respective costs, and then sums up the total to spit out that total shipping cost. In this case, for the 525 units that we just plugged in as a demo, that would cost a little over $10,000 to ship. So we know our objective, we know our decision variables, and we know our constraints. It's time to solve this thing. So let's go ahead to Data, click on Solver, and here you'll see your solver parameters. So first things first, what's our objective? Well, our objective is shipping cost, which lives right here in cell E23. And we don't want to set that shipping cost to any particular value, although we could if we wanted to. And we certainly don't want to maximize the cost of shipping. That would just be crazy. We want to minimize our shipping cost. And we're going to do so by changing a certain set of variable cells or decision variables, which live right here in green, D16 through G19. There we go. And the only thing we need to do now is set our constraints. And there are going to be a few different constraints. Let's go ahead and add the first. Now, our first constraint, which is a simple one, but it's important to add in here, is that we can't ship fractions of products, right? We have to ship whole units or quantities. So we know that our decision variables here, D16 through G19, have to be INT, which indicates that it must be an integer. So press OK. There we go. That's constraint number one. We're going to add two more. The first is going to be our supply constraint, which means that our units shipped out 
which live here in I-16 to I-19, units by factory have to be less than or equal to the number of units that each factory has available. And note that I can do this in one step by selecting kind of the entire array of four cells. The alternative would be to turn this into four different constraints, you know, where I-16 is less than or equal to I-5, I-17 is less than or equal to I-6, but we can do it in one step by selecting all four cells at once. So again, this says that we can't ship more units than a factory has. Press OK. And then our third constraint is our demand constraint. So we've got to fulfill the entire demand for each distribution center. So the units received by those distribution centers lives right here in D21 through G21. And in this case, we can't be over or under. We have to be exactly equal to the number of orders demanded or units demanded for each of those locations, which live right here in cells D10 through G10. Press OK. And we are good to go. Solving method is going to be the simplex LP option since this is a linear optimization case. And check it out. All we need to do now is click solve. And almost instantly, we get this results box that says solver found a solution. All constraints and optimality conditions are satisfied. And note that it plugged in the values right here in our decision variables, and it spit out that minimum total shipping cost, which in this case is $96,687.75. So let's go ahead and keep that solver solution. Note that we can save these values as a scenario in our scenario manager or we can just press OK. And there you have it. We have optimized this very complex logistical challenge by determining exactly how many units to ship from four different factories to our four different distribution centers. And there you have it. Quick demo of how to use Excel's solver tool to solve these types of more complex real-world optimization problems.